What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. We've got another shark attack discussion today and instead of doing videos about each separate incident, I wanted to just group them all together. Some of you guys out there in the comments have mentioned these incidents to me in isolation when they happen. But considering they're all pretty much in the same region, I thought it would be best to discuss them as a whole. Before we start though, I want to remind you all that I am not a shark attack specialist. There are scientists out there who are researching this topic who have been deeply involved in it for more than 30, 40 years. Saying that though, I am a shark scientist and I know sharks and their behavior. At least enough to shed some light on some of these incidents and step back and look at them from a broader perspective. The reason why I say this each time though is because I think it's really important to round your opinion off on a topic like this from the actual specialists. And because this isn't my area of research on sharks, the data that I have available to me is fairly limited. I have to rely off research papers that I've found, news reports of the incidents, anecdotal eyewitness reports, and any additional supporting data that I can find on the internet. Being a shark scientist and a science communicator, I can package this down for you guys into a 10 minute or so video that tries to cover the topic appropriately. Right, okay, enough waffling. I'm sure lots of you out there will have heard of the shark attack that have happened in the Bahamas recently. There's been a fair amount of them, notably on US citizens, so you'll tend to see those hitting the news headlines. But it does look like there might be something going on in the Bahamas. The Bahamas itself is considered to be in the top six global shark bite hotspots, with the other five being the US, Brazil, Australia, South Africa, and Reunion Island. I will be doing that video on Recife in Brazil, by the way, guys, so stay tuned for that one. Generally, the shark bite rate in the Bahamas has remained relatively stable over the last 30 five years or so with an average of naught to two bites per year. But in recent years, those baseline levels have been gradually increasing. Alongside this, the Bahamas is one of the major tourist hotspots in the Western Hemisphere. Tourism accounts for around 60% of the gross domestic product for the region, which is a huge percentage. And shark tourism alone in the Bahamas has been estimated to generate around $80 million annually. So we can see here straight off the bat, you're going to get a lot of people heading to the Bahamas who are going there to go in the sea. And a decent number of those people are going to be interacting with sharks in some way, shape or form. Right, okay, let's have a look then at some of the incidents that have happened. So up first, we've got a US woman who was fatally mauled off the northwest of Rose Island, New Providence in September 2022. The woman was reported to be snorkeling with her family at the time and witnesses believed it to be a bull shark. Next up, we've got the Cameron Robbins incident in May 2023 off Athol Island. Cameron jumped off a sunset cruise boat into the water and his body was never recovered. Lots of people claim to see Cameron being attacked by a shark in the video of the incident, but myself and several other specialists failed to see this. Because there was no conclusive evidence of a shark attack, nor was a body recovered, it's not included in the official data, although I do believe Cameron was likely consumed by sharks after his disappearance, hence why I've got it on this map here. Next, a man in his mid-twenties was retrieved from the water off Saunders Beach on Nassau here in August 2023. The police at the time reported he had injuries on his body that were consistent with that of a shark attack, although they did say that his body had likely been in the water for four to eight hours, so we don't know if this one was a scavenging event. This one is slightly disconcerting for me though, as I have swum off this beach before. Next up then, more recently, a German woman was believed to have been killed by a tiger shark in November 2023 whilst diving off Tiger Beach in Western Grand Bahama. The woman was seen surfacing before struggling at the surface and then disappearing below the waves. Some of her scuba gear was reportedly found which showed evidence of a shark attack and because of the location of the incident, which is a popular dive site to dive with tiger sharks, that species was thought to be responsible. And then finally, very recently, a US woman was killed by, as of currently, an unknown shark species in December 2023, whilst paddleboarding off Sandals Royal Bahamaian Resort in Nassau. This one right now has minimal information. The shark supposedly bit her hip and right arm, but it is quite a surprise that she was bitten whilst paddleboarding. Paddleboarders don't crop up a lot in regards to shark attack data, although there is plenty of evidence out there showing that sharks are curious of paddleboarding and in some cases have bitten the boards before. Alongside these fatal incidents, there were other non-fatal attacks. Most notably, a US woman lost her leg in June 2023 after surfacing from a dive on the west coast of Grand Bahama Island. The shark basically bit her leg as she was climbing up the dive ladder. The species responsible was thought to be a Caribbean reef shark and importantly here was in an area where the sharks were previously being fed by a glass bottom boat. Remember this one for later. So looking at that map there, we've got six incidents in the last 15 months or so. 
three of which are confirmed fatal shark attacks, the two women from the States and the German woman, one potential shark attack from the man who washed ashore, one disappearance with Cameron Robbins, who likely was consumed by sharks, and then one non-fatal incident with the US woman losing a leg. Five of those happened in 2023. So looking at it briefly, it does look like the Bahamas has had an increase in their attacks and definitely an increase in their fatal attacks. But why is this happening? What's going on here? Looking at the dates of the attacks, there's a fair bit of spread across different months. May, June, August, September, November, and December all feature. And we can see there that that's mostly the second half of the year. The hurricane season for the Bahamas runs officially from June to the end of November. And during this time of year, you would probably expect an average of around seven hurricanes. Although this year the Bahamas got off pretty lightly with their hurricanes, they had two. But even those two, one of them was in the southernmost tip of the Bahamas and the other one only grazed West Grand Bahama by about 350 kilometers. So really there weren't that many big storms in the Bahamas this year. Normally it would be expected that hurricane season would keep people out of the water a little bit more than at other times of the year. But in a season where there just haven't been that many, you can bet that more people were using the water. Alongside this relatively light hurricane season, the Bahamas experienced one of its hottest summers on record. Temperatures well above average were recorded from June all the way to September, which probably caused a fair amount of mass coral bleaching in the Bahamas. Have a look at this accumulated heat stress graphic for summer 2023 in the Bahamas. It's absolutely nuts. By July during this animation, the threshold for mass coral bleaching and die off is well and truly reached. It just gives you a scale of the levels of temperature rise we're talking about here. Why are you blathering on about temperature, Chris? I hear you ask. Well, temperature can play a big role in shark attacks. As the temperature increases, coral bleaches and then dies off. Reef fish then struggle to survive without the coral and they also die off. And then other fish species shift in their distribution around the ocean. This can then drive sharks who normally might be feeding on these prey species closer to shore, which obviously increases the chances of encountering humans. Alongside this, at the same time as they're moving closer to shore, the increase in temperature causes their metabolism to shoot up, which means they're burning off more energy by digesting their food faster, lowering the absorption of nutrients they can get from that food, and finally, means they have to consume more food to survive. This could be a massive driver in the rate of shark attacks in the Bahamas and is especially important as we move into a much warmer future. I could harp on about hurricanes and temperature being factors that can lead to an increase in shark attacks all day, but they're not the only two factors in play here. One of the key factors that I think is playing havoc in the Bahamas right now is the human factor. The country depends so much on tourism and marine ecotourism to survive. What was the number? $80 million per year generated from shark tourism alone. But as a result of this lucrative and ever-growing tourism industry in the Bahamas, I think we might be getting a few more irresponsible tourism operators out there. By using the word irresponsible, I'm of course referring to the provisioning and feeding of sharks. There are so many examples of tourism operators out there baiting sharks, despite the practice being pretty frowned upon by some Bahamian government officials. Even though some tour operators have stopped doing it, sharks will still gather in areas that have been heavily chummed or baited before. In the incident where the lady survived but lost her leg, she and others reported that day that there was a glass bottom boat out there chucking food in the water to try and lure the sharks closer. And then you have the reports of the day cruises who are chucking food scraps overboard and that is of course going to draw the sharks in and get them accustomed to boats. These are all activities that I imagine happen still pretty regularly in the Bahamas. Sometimes the desire to ensure tourists are definitely going to encounter a shark on one of these trips outweighs the risk of getting in trouble for feeding or baiting them and this without a shadow of a doubt is going to increase the likelihood of sharks encountering humans out at sea. Sharks are beginning to associate boats with food and where there are boats in the Bahamas there are usually snorkelers and divers and people are going to get bitten as a result of it. Another one that's just popped into my head is you'll likely have fishermen who are cleaning their fish and discarding the waste portions of that fish back into the sea. And this could be near areas that are popular with swimmers and water users, and that's going to bring the sharks in as well. I can see in 2019, the agriculture minister for the Bahamas did suggest a shark chumming ban could be on the cards. But nowhere online can I see any information about there being a current ban on chumming or feeding sharks in the Bahamas. If that isn't in place yet, I imagine the Bahamian government are going to implement a countrywide ban on chumming and feeding of sharks relatively quickly. Whether those 
those bans are going to be enforced remains to be seen. So those are my brief thoughts on the recent spate of attacks in the Bahamas. I think it's got a lot to do with the provisioning of sharks alongside the Bahamas being a heavy marine tourism destination. And it's also got a little bit to do with the high temperatures that we're seeing in the region. What do you guys reckon is causing this uptick in attacks then? Is it for reasons that I haven't mentioned in this video? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like. It really makes a difference. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sharp Bite channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button. And that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time. <laughs>